Good afternoon, everyone. First, uh, I'd like to thank organizers for this opportunity to have a talk here. And so, uh, uh, before I start, uh, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Josef Lushek, and uh, I am a member of Quantum Optics Lab in Olomouc, uh, Czech Republic. And uh, today I am here to talk about uh, our experimental study of direct nonlinearity measurement of various types uh, of single photon detectors and their comparison with respect to the deviation from the linear behavior. Okay, so the linear responsivity of the single photon detector is uh, one of the basic requirements for accurate uh, measurement of uh, ultra-weak optical signals. And a uh, detector is uh, defined to be uh, linear if uh, it has a linear response with respect to, to optical power. Here you can see illustration of the nonlinear behavior of a single photon detector. And uh, a simple expectation is an uh, integral symbol shaped sublinear dependence on this. And uh, it is more or less limited by saturation effects uh, due to recovery process and uh, noise performance. Of course, uh, these effects dominate on the opposite sides of the power range and they are strongly depending on the mechanism of the single photon detection. However, we found that some detectors exhibit an uh, S-shaped response where the slope gets slightly supralinear in the middle. Uh, there is a great number of results in modeling the response of the single photon avalanche diode with uh, the ultimate goal of including all the relevant factors such as noise, recovery process, after pulsing, and so on. In the past, various uh, dead time correction models was discovered for the geiger mill detectors and later have been used even for SPET detectors. Uh, but current evidence shows that uh, SPET modules exhibit neither constant dark counts nor constant recovery time. And so if uh, the recovery time of the detector is a function of the innocent photons, uh, these models become insufficient and because they do not predict this kind of supralinearity. So, as an uh, experimentalist, I have two options. First, uh, I can fully characterize detector using time-resolved measurements and circuit analysis, or I can measure nonlinearity directly. So we chose the second option and we focus on a direct uh, measurement uh, of the detector response nonlinearity as a function of the detection rate. Uh, individual methods of measuring detectors response can be distinguished sorry, uh, between relative and absolute measurement. Relative measurements require some kind uh, of optical standards and etalons, namely calibrated attenuator and uh, reference detector. Uh, the absolute methods, which are generally preferred, use uh, the addition of non-interfering beams uh, on the detector and then direct measurement of its response. We employ the absolute measurement strategy based on the single source superposition method. And this method uh, utilizes a single continuous wave optical source and uh, simple counting detection electronics without time resolution. So the light source has to be incoherent to prevent interference effects in the measurement setup and has to be highly stable within measurement cycles. Uh, a variable attenuator is used to scan the input power over the full dynamic range of the detector and the test. The attenuated beam is split and joined using polariz polarization beam splitters to avoid phase interference. Another great advantage of this method is that uh, this workflow is applicable to any single photon detector, regardless of the detection technology. 
The principle of measurement of uh, deviation from linearity is based on measuring the response of the detector to two optical beams and then compared to the overall response to an incoherent superposition of the beams. So for a constant intensity level of the optical source, a series of three measurements is performed but as shown on uh, this illustration. First, the detection rate is recorded for the beam A with the beam B being closed by shutter. Then the detection rate B is recorded with the beam B open and uh, the beam A closed. And finally, the detection rate AB is accurate for both beams simultaneously in piping detector. The splitting ratio is chosen to be approximately 50 to 50. The same value of the rates A and B is simply the only possible uh, setable ratio on the measurement uh, detection rate. So uh, next, the deviation from nonlinearity delta is defined in the bottom left corner. You can see in the case of a perfect uh, single photon detector, the deviation from the linearity would be equal to zero over the entire detection operating range. Before we could start modeling the deviation from the linearity, linear behavior, uh, we have to define the nonlinearity as a function of detection rate. Detection rate is a function of uh, the initial photon rate, which we are not able to measure. So we are using trick with inverse function just to, in, uh, just to rewrite the nonlinearity as a function of measured detection rate, as you can see in the bottom right corner. Now we are ready. So we can use this formula to simulate detector response established by various factors such as the dark count rate uh, and the time saturation uh, using uh, theoretical models uh, that I show you before. Uh, so now let's turn to the results. Here you can see the measured nonlinearity as a function of the detection rate for several actively and one passively quenched single photon avalanche diodes. The typical log-log plot uh, of the SPET nonlinearity is V-shaped uh, due, due to dark counts, you can see left slope, and the time saturation on the right. So the nonlinearity reaches its minimum uh, value uh, 10 to the power of minus 3 for detection rates between uh, 10 to the power of 4 and 10 to the power of 5 counts per second. Uh, as you can see, the resulting fits uh, are in significant disagreement with the data. Here you can see the non-parallelizable non uh, dead time model, which I mentioned before, but we tried every theoretic model what we found. Because uh, not all systematic errors can be visible in this log scale, so we evaluated the chi square parameter and its large values demonstrate how bad the model actually ref reflects our data. Even the fit parameters uh, such as dark count rate and the time do not agree with value that were obtained from uh, our independent measurements. And you can see uh, values uh, in the table. So, okay, and let's move uh, to SNSPD. Uh, the temperature of uh, our module was uh, kept at uh, 2.7 Kelvin. First, we measured uh, the dependence of the dead time, detection efficiency, and dark counts on the bias current. Optimal working bias current is 25 microamperes using the manufacturer specification. So as you can see, the property affected the most is uh, detection efficiency. And uh, this uh, efficiency is calculated relatively to the manufacturer's specification of 86% for optimal bias current. But uh, we can move uh, and focus on the main result, which is nonlinearity measurement. The measured uh, nonlinearity behavior of uh, SNSPD uh, is a combination of several phenomena. 
for lower rates, the effect of dark counts is easily recognizable. Around uh, uh, detection uh, rates about uh, 10 to the power of uh, 4 count per second, all subcritical regimes uh, begin to exhibit supralinearity. For higher count rates, there are two scenarios. So, bias currents between 20 and 25 microamperes lead to dead time saturation, while lower bias uh, maintain the supralinearity. And uh, finally, the last region of the detection rates uh, that are higher than uh, 10 to the power of 7 counts per second. Here you can see latching uh, rapidly increases for all biases except uh, the lowest ones. So uh, this introduces strongly saturation and eventually leads to an inverse detection response where uh, count rate decreases with increasing illumination. So let me stress here uh, that supralinear behavior of the SNSPDs has two causes. In general, with decreasing bias current, two photon and high order detection efficiencies rise. And the second factor is uh, the AC coupling of the electronic readout circuit. Because the settling of the bias current after each detection event uh, affects efficiency, which becomes dependent on the rate. So it is obvious that it is really challenging to model detector response, including all these effects. And uh, okay, so in brief, uh, I'd like to recap the main points of my presentation. So we present a method for direct measurement of the detector response applicable to any single photon detection technology. And uh, we discover supralinear behavior of SPEDs and show that it cannot be fully explained using no theoretical models. Uh, we explore the nonlinearity of SNSPDs for various values of uh, bias current. And we also identify supralinearity uh, behavior caused by the interplay of uh, recovery processes, uh, latching, and two photon sensitivity. And uh, the results for both for SPEDs and SNSPDs show that nonlinearity in a <clears throat> single photon detection is a complex mixture of non-trivial non phenomena. So to conclude, the direct absolute measurement of nonlinearity is the preferred way how to analyze the detector response. So here's the main point, and uh, this brings me to the end of my presentation. And I'm uh, sorry for uh, uh, complication, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Okay. First, let's give an applause to Joseph.